All right, back where we left off. Answer the fucking phone. Good evening, Alex. It's Bozeman here, your boss. While you're powering up and getting the adverts loaded, I thought I should just tell you that we've had one of those public information films from the government, and it's mandatory that you play it. You still have a free choice for the other two, so read those tape labels carefully, but make sure you play the advance advert, preferably at the second break. Right, that's the lot. Have a great show. Total kill. Yeah, he so he sounds like a real hard ass. Not. Oh, whoops. Did you pass that here? Then he slipped out. Yeah, I should probably restart that. I forgot about that. If I gave a shit, I'd probably cut that out, but whatever. Information films from the government, and it's mandatory that you play it. You still have a free choice for the other two, so read those tape labels carefully. But make sure Check you play the prostate. advanced advert, preferably at the second break. Right, that's the lot. Have a great show, total pimp. My god, that was nasty. Oh, how's it going with Steve? Why are all men such perfect? Yeah, well, eh? Apparently he has a complicated relationship with his patient. No. Sorry, are you saying he chose his imaginary friend in the sky over you? I don't know why I talked to you. The problem is a really awful date. Ten seconds, everybody. Like I said, all of you. Did your personality have any slip out? Pricks. Going in five, <laughs> four, three. Good evening. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. And I'm Megan Wolf. Our main stories tonight. Uncooperative. A mysterious symbol has appeared overnight on thousands of buildings throughout the capital. Tonight, in an exclusive live interview with Prime Ministers Julia Salisbury and Peter Clement, I'll be asking what this mysterious symbol might mean. After three months of record-breaking approval ratings, could this be the daring first move of a silent resistance movement? And what would that mean as we go into the future? We shall overcome. Trapped in Dante's taint for more than a month now, doctors Ingrid Sforsborg and Horgensford and David Wong announced today that they're considering two possible options. With two of the finest minds in science working together, hopes are still high for the eventual return of the team to dry land. While both options are still we'll on the table, we'll support seems to be one. growing for a daring escape attempt. If a group of fungus experts can't fix the most advanced craft ever conceived by man, then who can? Bearing their opinions, the formerly rich are fighting back with a naked protest. Our very own Robin Short was on hand earlier today when this new protest group first presented themselves. <laughs> Spokesman Wendell <laughs> Somerset Bentley said today, kind of they've had the shirts off our backs, they might as well have the west of it too. And while it's easy to laugh, perhaps we should all just be pondering how desperate the formerly rich are to regain their power. Fallen angel, notorious addict Johnny Hansleeve seems to have reached a new low in his battle with Boone, as this recent picture reveals. Johnny's star certainly lacks its former glory these days, with public concern over his mental Wait, and physical health growing at an alarming rate. Since being banned from the national squad earlier this year after urinating on a referee during a friendly against East Grinchley, things seem to have gone from bad to worse. British Art Kelly? Is this one celebrated role model about to become the bad boy of sport? And onwards and upwards. In an attempt to put the Mr. Snuggle Hugs disaster behind them, Rimmington's Fist CEO, Sophia Rimmington, today announced a brand new product that already has the markets buzzing with interest. This groundbreaking product came as quite a shock when it was revealed oh. earlier today. <laughs> what Though the hell? critics are skeptical that the young CEO can fulfill her promises. I'm not putting that on. When only a flawed will do, you need the Flawed Master 5000. That's the slogan accompanying the announcement that has rocked the construction industry this morning. The breakthrough device for aiding in installation is sure to change the way we see the humble flood. With that exclusive Prime Ministerial interview coming up later. And our very own Patrick Bannon coming to you live from the first annual sports board final. You won't want to miss a second of tonight's National Nightly News. Ah uh, yes, we got in this crap now.
boring on the commercial or the commercial breaks. It's annoying First when you actually need to control the cameras. After the Christmas horror caused by Mr. Snugglehugs, we have an exclusive interview with one of the victims. Poor seven-year-old Timmy Tadlock, like so many of those affected by the Christmas bloodbath, has spent the last three months undergoing a series of reconstructive facial surgeries. Last week, joyfully, he spoke for the first time since the tragedy. Tonight, he talks to us. Before we go to the interview, however, this station would like to issue a full and frank apology for any part we may have played in the tragedy. We should never have advertised Mr. Snugglehugs. That our publicity, the sheer scale of this tragedy, and now upwards of 8,000 casualties, might have been averted. On behalf of the Nightly yeah, News that. team, we're sorry. In the future, we will do better. Now it's over to Robin Short at the Tadlock family home. Robin? Thank you, Megan. I'm here with Mr. and Mrs. Tadlock and their seven-year-old son, Timothy. Thanks for spending time with us today. Yes, well, you're bloody lucky we're spending any time with you at all. But what you lot did, irresponsible. I mean, whose idea was this anyway? It's all right. It's not your fault. As you can see, Megan, there's still a few balloons here. I'll tread carefully. I'm going to speak to Timmy now. Hello, Timmy. Can you see me? Mummy, who's that lady? It's a lady from television. I'm not sure if playing the ad affects this or not. I'll try that later. Don't worry, Mr. Tadlock. I wasn't the youngest ever editor of the Swinstead Middle School Inquirer for no reason. So, Timmy, can you tell us what happened to you? You had just unwrapped Mr. Snugglehug's hand. Was he under the tree? Yes, I could smell him already. Yes. He smelled like love. Ah, yes, that'll be the fur. Scented with her. I was so excited. I ran up to my room and gave him a big hug. He was so soft and warm, like our cat, before he got in the way of Daddy's Porsche. Bloody cat had a death wish. And what did Mr. Snugglehug say to you? He blinked his moral action eyes and said, you're my very best friend. But I sure wish Mrs. Snugglehug was here, and she can't be, which is 89.99. And then, and then it's the general error. What's he want? And is that when he burst into flames? Look careful. And, is that when and then he flames? exploded. <laughs> Look, I passed you nicely. And am I right in saying that one of his real action eyes is now permanently embedded in your cheek? Yes. When I took him in at night, it glows through bandages. I know it's under there. Staring at me. There are some of the other children of the almost three girl. eyes. And that with his glasses, that's five. It's too many eyes, Robin. And what's the last thing you remember before the darkness overtook you? He looked at me with his white eyes and laughed. Love as he burned. It sounds very traumatic. Do you have nightmares? All right, that's quite you? enough of Timmy? you two. Timmy? Come in here with your camera. Timmy? Gonna make a buck out of our suffering. I won't have it. Mr. Tadlock, just a couple more questions. Timmy, do you think you will ever be what we can call no, no, you've normal had your questions, again? And now look. Oh, you've made him cry with all three of his eyes. I do you think your parents will ever really love you again? Yep, that's the average reporter. So there you have it, Megan. Just one of the many victims of an indescribable tragedy that has shaken our nation. Thank you, Robin, for harrowing stuff. And many questions to be answered by Sophia Remington in the coming days and months, I'd wager. How will she turn this crisis around? So, Jeremy, what are the warning signs a consumer should look out for when they're spotting a dangerous toy? Well, Megan, experts advise to always check for the new advanced mark, which guarantee a level of safety and quality. Yeah, can we just get a close-up on camera three here? So if we take a look at this National Nightly News mug, you should see the mark just on the base of it there. In the wake of the scandal, the government were praised for their swift response in bringing in the set of stringent checks on new products. It certainly is good to know that someone's watching out for our families. When we come back, our very own Patrick Bannon will be live from the sports board finals. Stick around, you won't want to miss it. We'll be back after these messages. One minute back. Oh, sorry, I'm bursting. Oh! She's very good. <laughs> 
Megan. Yes, she's. Yes, she's back, Jeremy. The women are coming. I'm not worried about these women. They're taking up space. This has got the crazy feel. Alex, Bozo, we're getting reports in that naked protesters might try and spoil the sports board final by waving their fleshy bits about. Try and make sure you don't broadcast it. It's 6 p.m. for God's sake. No one wants to see fannies on the news. Easier said than done. Freaking Brit Bond. Let's get crazy. You want to sleep on your lawn? We've got flower beds. We have even got shrubbery. You want to sling a hammer? We'll throw in the trees for free. You need a sleeping bag? We've got men's sleeping bag, boys' sleeping bags, couples' sleeping bag, sleeping bag. You could sleep it upside down with just your feet out. We got beds you can sleep on on your front. Well, that's what it says. Yes, I understand that, but I always say welcome back. I think we should just keep it as it is. Well, of course you do. I've got one hack line. What's that supposed to mean? I didn't write it, Jeremy. That's all right. Fine. Jenny, there's nothing wrong with the auto cue. Ten seconds. Oh, I just felt a drip again. Have they not fixed this? Oh, we'll see us frying. It's good for the ratings. Five. Probably not wrong four, there. Three. Welcome back to the National Nightly News. I'm Megan Moore. Coming up later, we'll be speaking to the Prime Ministers about their exciting new healthcare facilities, transition centres. Nice to see they care. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Jeremy. But first, we're going now to our own Patrick Bannon, who's reporting live from the finals of the new game that's gripping the nation, Sports Board. Patrick? That's right, Megan. You join me live here from the final, the first annual Sports Board Championship. It's been a hotly contested competition so far. I think it's fair to say these two have been dancing around each other all season. First up, we have Ellie Stryker. She's the more experienced of our two players today. Stryker has got an accuracy of 7, a danger rating of K, and a 12-month driving ban. Stryker's known for her signature move, the Lanky Hamster. And facing her tonight, hoping to prove himself with a career record of 12 outs, 14 finishes, and a divorce pending, is Mr Wingspun himself, Tommy, the fingernail Harris. Just waiting on the ref now. The slapping ceremony is taking part. Still going on. It's just like going in a Monty Python and territory now. Of course, uh, first to start as she won the trivia round earlier on by some margin. Uh, Harris, uh, perhaps the brawn and not the brain. Stupid. Stupid. Eddie Stryker. Eddie Stryker. Nice start there from Stryker. She's determined not to let the nerve show. Uh, not after last time. On to Mr. Harris now, Tommy. On to Mr. Harris now. Tommy. Using his arm to pick up the ball. Using his arm to pick up the ball. Not a bad shot there from, uh, from Harris. Back to Stryker for shot number three. All right. I blame flag football for this, starting this kind she's of gone, thing. She's sort of throwing under her legs. Uh, she's like, this is definitely the next step in uh, Bit of business with the record, wussy sports. Or wussified sports. Back to Harris now. A ball in the hand is worth two in the bush. I'd say that's fair, but what do I know? But yeah, this is total Monty Python vibes. Oh no, and Harris is not going to be happy with that. So really not a good start there for Tommy Harris in round one. We can only hope that round two treats me a bit better. Uh, but first, of course, after the argument with the ref section, it's time to change ends. Now we have the ceremonial changing of the ends. And of course, now they go back to the starting positions, as that makes sense. Striker giving it large. Second round. Going to round two now with Harris. Okay, okay. we seem to have some sort of streaker on the pitch. Uh, Bob doesn't be broadcast any of that stuff. Um, she appears to have slogans across her breasts and arse. Um, uh, try and ignore all of that. Security, I'm sure, we're going to take them out as soon as possible. Uh, Apologise if uh, we. We broadcast any of that, as I said. Again, uh, we're easier get said than done. As soon as possible. Um, uh, they're trying to carry on play, but it's probably a bit difficult, and I'm struggling to follow. Because um, uh, it's quite nice, though. And, um, probably should have uh, right, pixelated great. that okay, a bit so better. Okay, so round two now, uh, and Harris absolutely determined to close that massive gap. Eddie Stryker. No, it's just one of the tightest play I've seen ever. No, it's just one of the tightest play I've seen ever. Harris. Harris. And was that the fetid thumbscrew? We haven't seen Zaz of the Heath. What a brilliant move. Back to strike. I don't even know what the point of this is. And we know what that means, ladies and gentlemen. That is, of course, the ground sound. Of course, the ground sound. 
Excellent bit of play here on both sides of the bucket. This dude, Jake, is extremely well, I high. I don't know about you at home, but I'm finding the technical I mastery in this play here absolutely blooming jaw-dropping. Absolutely blooming jaw-dropping. The ref has spotted something in uh, Harris's neck or head. In, uh, and Harris is having an absolute shocker. What a miserable start there for Tommy Harris. But he is a late bloomer, of course, towards And after all, he is a game of two halves. Four rounds and seven subjects. But now, of course, it's time for the half time show. What about Livington Spit? On my whistle, on my whistle. Nice piece of music here to start the half time show. Okay, another posh protest to lose in the court here. We can only apologise for that. Um, we'll do our best to shield you from having to look directly at it. Um, is uh, running around here with yeah, his genitals uh, on either. display for all to see. Um, and uh, ruining what was shaping up to be quite the dance interlude there. Um, now he's thrusting himself in, uh, in Harris's face. Security is on it. Uh, and the bucket has been knocked over! I cannot stand it when the bucket gets knocked over. Um, hopefully he'll get taken out now. Um, uh, genitals flying around for all to see. Um, Really, if you ask me, not Sunday morning television. Um, and uh, out of there, uh, hopefully uh, taken away, never to be seen again. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. Moonboy cannot be in the final pose. And a lovely finish there on both sides. That dude seriously looks like somebody used to be on a Discord server. Uh, and as we head into round three, I'd love to know what's going on in these two players' heads. Uh, but unfortunately, because of science, we can't. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because of science, we can't. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. Well, that ball boy's giving me the eye all the day. I what's going on. Ball boy's giving me the eye all the day. Uh, striker there, not a great start. Um, she looks a bit flustered, I think, after all that swinging around. Back to Harris here. God, what I wouldn't give to be that ball. Am I right, ladies? I I'm to be don't what I know. Right, Tommy Harris. Tommy Harris. And it dribbled down his arm, which is actually a really good move, because, of course, if it dribbles down his arm and goes on the floor, it's not going in the bucket. Back to striker. Back to striker. And striker's gone for the animal bonus there, but of course, perhaps. And yes, Harris has counted it with a tiny bell. That is wonderful play. Of course, we've seen that before. Look at her face. She is absolutely gutted. What a mug. Um, that could have been the clincher. What a massive shame. Um, Harris receives possession now. Uh, Harris to serve now. Um, Harris, of course, undefeated by Kestrel in his last four battles. Here we go. Tommy Harris. Tommy Harris. That's all right. That's all right. Oh, God, Not bad there. He threw it quite far away from him, which is quite a good idea. Very clever there. Perhaps a little contact. Caution from the referee, who's being, if you ask me, a little bit harsh. Ellie Stryker. Ellie Stryker. Oh, she's got the last game to What the hell was that? You came to see it, don't you? You cannot believe it. Yeah, this this oh, freaking say, section really goes on way too long, though. I don't know what I can be doing about this. Um, uh, I mean, there's sort of uh, uh, breasts and genitals for all to see. Um, uh, I mean, there's only so much. The sad do. part is, this probably yeah, wouldn't kill ratings in real life. That would boost it. I, I'll, I'll try and carry on. Um, the players are trying to carry on, but of course it's difficult because um, because these protesters are uh, hopefully we can get them taken off soon, so we can carry on with them. Oh, oh, no, what is going on here? Yes, yes. We want our money. Yes, very good. Take them away. Bloody wasters. Absolute wasters. Oh, jog on. It's an absolute bloody... OK, and now we're going to go into the final round. Um, and of course, as it's a Tuesday, the final round is a mime round. Who could believe it? I don't even want to know what that seems to mean. Uh, nice imaginary shot there from uh, Harris. It really could go in there at this point. Um, really high level play here from two absolute juggernauts of the sport. Two absolute of the sport. Hold. Hold. Uh, the bucket getting moved back to its proper place. Uh, the foul mm -hmm. time, if you ask me. She's uh, juggling it around from her hands. So. Uh, the sad part is, is probably people that and actually she's, uh, watch this crap. Like, as if it was an egg, and, and now she's um, and she spat it out. She did the egg spin. So uh, a wonderful move there, quite late on uh, from striker. But she's in it to win it. On it, like a car bonnet. On it, like a car bonnet. Tommy Harris here, having a bit of beef. Uh, Tommy Harris here, having a bit of beef. 
and he's peeling it as if it were a banana, which is an interesting move. Um, not sure if he hasn't had his potassium or what's going on today with him. And he's trying to have the banana with the ball. What a fantastic move there from Harris. Unfortunately, that is the end. What a pathetic. There we go, Jeremy. That is over. How can he look his eight-year-old son in the face tonight? What a lump. Uh, we just have to wait for the referee now to announce it to make sure it is all official. Mm -hmm. Contestants in, please. And the winner and the of the winner first annual of the Sports first Board Championship. Sports Board Championship is is everyone. Okay, we're up off the screen once again. A win for everyone. Yep, that's now, communism ball, all right? Fifteenth win in the Sports Board Championship. Um, Where's the participation trophy? With my wife and children. Uh, another wonderful victory for me. Uh, here come the on-site security to collect their medals, uh, their sixth and seventh respectively. Um, and thanks again for watching the uh, Sports Board Championship. Uh, yeah, I ain't touching that one. Patrick Bannon, um, looking forward to celebrating tonight. Um, and all I always have to say, Jeremy, is back to you in the studio. The Patrick Bannon there had an extraordinary fight. Historic sports board, Jeremy. I didn't know you were a fan. Oh, yeah, I can wrench a doubler with the best of them, I'll have you know. I certainly wouldn't bet against you. And when we come back, I'll be talking live with Prime Ministers Julia Salisbury and Peter Clement, who apparently have a big announcement you wouldn't want to miss. That's coming up after these messages. That's coming up. One minute back. Fucking microphone shot me. What? <laughs> Fucking microphone! Oh, Just you got shocked, me. huh? Where's that sound guy? I'm Tommy Everything okay? Uh, oh, that'd the be the sound guy. To kill us now, apparently. You'll be fine. That's the electrician. I'm immune to your cheap flattery. I'm wearing you down. Postman again. Just heard from the chaps in maintenance that the storm is causing the odd power surge, so your controls might be a bit uh, dangerous. You think? Now I know you're tough, and you can take the odd shock for the sake of a perfect news broadcast, but too many in quick succession can stop the old ticker. I'm sure you'll make the right decisions. Postman out. Basically telling me to go fuck myself. So sorry about all the buckets. We uh, seem to have sprung a leak. Well, uh, several, actually. We're going to need a whole new lining up there. Triple soup. Well, that's so good to see you again. Miss Wolf, your star seems to be in the ascendant. It's a great time to be alive. Too bloody right. Peter Clement. Megan Wolf. My, but that's a firm handshake you've got there. She's tougher than she looks. <laughs> Am I here? Uh, here, with Mr. Clement you on your left. Right you are, pet. <laughs> You'll see, girl. You sure about that? No, mine's fine. We had a little accident. She's a cow. Five, four, three. Welcome back. I am delighted to be joined by Prime Ministers Julia Salisbury and Peter Clement. Welcome to the National Nightly News. Mm -hmm. Oh, please, it's just Julia and Peter. We don't believe much in titles. It doesn't seem very... Ooh, I almost got hit by that one. We're delighted to be here. Well, firstly, I should ask how you feel about the graffiti that's been springing up across the capital. Should we be worried? Oh, no. No, you definitely shouldn't be worried. Well, not unless you've got a fatal paint allergy anyway. But, yes, it does seem... There are still some people we haven't been able to help. Mm. You know, we just know. People who get to benefit from the many advantages of the new future. And you know, Megan, as my old mum used to say, there are some pissants who just don't know how to be. We're working hard to reach these people, find out what they're angry about. Oh, right, I forgot the censor. The door to my government is always open. So I'm stripping on me. But we didn't come here to talk about what may yet Freaking turn out to be some sensor, alternative seriously. arts projects. Which we no doubt will have funded. When we want to talk to the nation about something far more exciting. Mm. Yes, your office briefed us that you have an announcement to make, but they were being surprisingly secretive about it. <laughs> Let me ask you a question, Megan. Okay, it's not usually how it works, but... Uh, what scares you? I mean, really scares you. I mean, really scares you. It's death. He's talking about death. We're all afraid of our deaths. It's part of being human. Sorry, are you saying that advance have cured death? That'll be a vote winner. Yeah, that's definitely a drop there. 
but while we may not have cured death, we hope we found a way to make it much less scary. And much less painful and much less expensive. Look, look, look. which is me close up camera? Okay. Okay. When I was 13, that's like what they do in Canada right now. From school, he had to go to the hospital. My granddad, he collapsed that morning. So we'd all to say our goodbyes. And I went in to see him. He was all frail and pale. I, I, I was scared because I'd only seen him the week before and he'd been fit as fiddle. And he said to me, Peter, he said, it's the right time. I don't ever want to be a burden to the people I know. Was that the last time you saw him? Nope. Three days later, he was back home. He lived with us for nine miserable years after that. He had to be fed with a rubber spoon. He had a commode. So he'd just take a shit right there in the lounge while we were watching food. Yeah, that ain't a joke. Even wait till after. Man, I barely want to get shocked with that one. Oh, it, it was awful. It was awful for us. And this is the point. It were awful for him. He could see it was destroying me, man, watching him slowly fade away. And he would beg her to turn off his breathing equipment at night. But she could Of course she wouldn't. It were a crime, you see. And she didn't want to lose the children as well as her old man. No family should have to suffer like Peter's did. No and now, like no family will have to. And now, no the health service to. is today opening the first the of 300 new transition centres. The transition centres. Well, that's a centers. Centers. Yes, he said that word. Everything for your last days. The legal, financial, medical, and emotional costs are all catered for and paid for. Even more than it's currently being misused. So, even the poorest citizen gets to pass on with dignity when they do. And that choice is important. This is a service only for people who choose it. For people who feel they've run their course and don't want to burden themselves or their families with a slow, long, humiliating decline. Are you okay? I don't know. Sorry, my apologies. Oh. Are you not worried? I think anyone can really forgive that one. The system might be open to abuse. In what way? <laughs> kind of deserves it, bud. But the older generation might feel somewhat. <laughs> Sorry, the that the older generation oh. might feel generation somewhat coerced. <laughs> Coerced into spending their final days eating gourmet food and drinking fine wine and luxury spas and gardens. Look, I am perfectly capable of with a rusted twat. Oh dear. Don't get yourself sorted out. Right. We're launching a government information film tonight. It should tell your viewers everything they need to know. You really do move at a brand new pace. Oh, okay. <laughs> You've yet to be an officer here. Oh, Megan. We're only getting started. I didn't even tell how I got hit with that one. I'm on that note. Thank you so much for being here. Jeremy, being here. Right, yes, um, that's all we have time for tonight. Our thank yous go out to our guests. Um, congratulations to all the winners of the Sports Board Final. And we'll see you tomorrow night at the same time. My name is Jeremy Dalton. If you can, have a peaceful night. And we're out. Good job, everybody. Oh, man, that one just straight up killed me. So they just... Mm -hmm. I don't suppose there's any way this could be a, a good thing. Nah, not There's really. my nephews. I don't think that last shot is that's even avoidable. Yeah, it ain't.
tackles this is that fucking effect again. So I guess a fancy Pelosi now. You don't see if he makes me go out in postures. Yeah. Seriously, that blonde clutch on election night? Yeah, Megan's pretty pissed off too. I'm not surprised. The bloke wouldn't know democracy if he's shutting his cornflakes. Yeah, but he's hot though. I suppose so, when you're oxygen thieves. Ten seconds, everybody! Your fragility is leaking. Mm. Wait, where am I what? Wrong day. Oh, how's it going with Steve? Why are all men such pricks? That one, eh? Apparently he has a complicated relationship with his faith. No. Sorry, are you saying he chose his imaginary... With that exclusive Prime Ministerial interview coming up later. And our very own Patrick Bat. Nightly news. Where's my Thirty makeup seconds, gone? everybody. Makeup. Is it raining outside? I'm sure I found a drip. Just a bit. I saw a man float by on a massive boat. Makeup. Where is that useless fucking idiot? I don't suppose he had any pets. Yeah, two of each. Makeup. Seriously, I feel for drip. Ten seconds, everybody! Look, I'll have someone look into it. For now, try not to drown. Going in five, four, three... First... So sorry about all these buckets. We uh, seem to have sprung a leak. Well, uh, several, actually. You're going to need a whole new lining up there. Triple seal, I shouldn't wonder. We'll look into it, Minister. It's so good to see you again. <laughs> Miss Wolf, your star seems to be in the ascendant. It's a great time to be alive. Too bloody right, Peter uh, Clement. Megan Wolf. My, but that's a firm handshake you've got there. <laughs> She's tougher than she looks. <laughs> <laughs> Am I here? Uh, here, with Mr Clement <clears throat> on your left. Right you are, pet. <clears throat> You'll see, Damp. Ten seconds, everybody. No, mine's fine. Have you had a little accident? She's a cow. Five, <laughs> She's four, a cow, all right. three. Ah, uh, yes, this one. The Five Nights at Freddy's one. Or the Five Nights at Tickle Me Elmo's. Alex, oh, thank God you're alive. It's Jenny, the floor manager. Are you okay? Alex, Alex, you need to get it together. Look at the broadcast screen. Just look at it. That's all we've been putting out since you went down. You have to fix it, now. Look left, Alex, out the window. See, they're all over it. Bastards. You're going to need a full charge to clear that many off. Hold down the big button until it's fully charged, then release it to zap the little fuckers. Five minutes of Freddy's. Excellent, Alex. We're broadcasting again. They must have built up while you were napping. Usually it only takes a tap on the button to clear one. Look, there's a lone one climbing now. Zap it off before it starts to mess up the signal again. Great. That seems to be the last of them. For now. Right. We're about a minute out. Get the adverts loaded up. I've got to deal with my pet idiot. And Alex? 
spikes. Keep your ears open. You'll hear them climbing up the tower. Don't let them build up. We'll be going live to the National Nightly News. But before that, let's take a look at what's coming up later. This has no credibility, Jenny. Really no crazy video. It's not a mess. Everything is where it should be. It's ramshackle and characterful, and I expect you to know the difference. Of course, Megan's place looked lovely, but I can't see it, can I? Thanks, Jenny. How's locking with the boyfriend going? Decided to take his chances on the wild streets, eh? Rather than endure another romantic comedy. Jeremy, Jenny says your hair looks stupid. Yes, I can hear her. And she says she's not talking to you. Yes, I know, I can hear her. Shall I count us in? Make it so. Okay, ten seconds. Break a leg, everyone. Very stupid, it looks better with that one. Five, four, three. Good evening, I'm Jeremy Donaldson. And I'm Megan Wolfe, our main stories tonight. Snuggle Fox? It's been almost five weeks since all the Mrs. Snuggle toys woke up simultaneously in factories worldwide and began searching for their husbands. The Mr. Snuggle Hugs were so short-sightedly destroyed. And now, as this photograph suggests, they may be changing tactics. Built to surprisingly traditional gender stereotypes, the Mrs. Snuggle Hugs have been arming themselves with a variety of household implements. All the more reason to make sure that cat flap is taped up good and tight. Armed with blunt weapons, the Mrs. Snuggle Hugs are only ankle height and therefore able to be kicked away easily by young, healthy individuals. They do, however, pose a particular risk to the elderly or those with pre-existing medical conditions like fatal bruise syndrome. Going stir-crazy with no signs of Mrs. Snugglehug's batteries running out and the government lockdown now in its 31st day. Yeah, I don't think batteries work that way. Across the country are taking some unexpected turns. Dramatic reports are beginning to emerge of uncharacteristically bold behavior in homes across the country. And we're not talking about the model planes that occupy so much time in the Donaldson household. With dating options limited, many house sharers, in particular students, are finding solace in co-tenants they previously rejected as unfuckable, indulging in an activity that has become known as snuggle-hugging. Old dogs no, that sounds tricks. like college. Bad boy celebrity Johnny Hansleaves announced today that he just can't wait until this lockdown's over so he can start his new career. It is, of course, up to each of us to choose how we spend this brief spell of collective unconsciousness. But if this photograph, sent by the man himself, is anything to go by, Johnny seems to be making some interesting decisions with regard to his time at home. Making his announcement by drunkenly shouting at his neighbours from the steps of his capital accommodation, Johnny was heard to repeatedly yell, I'm going to open a fucking forest, before failing to get back inside his house and sleeping it off over a low hedge. That's the next I'll take a dozen roses, Johnny. The shape of things to come, in their own version of a lockdown for more than 45 years now, the descendants of Drs David Wong and Ingrid Sporsborg and Horgensford and their unfortunate team today managed to get a personal statement to the surface using flagellized imaging equipment. Many of the Sporsborg and Horgens brood, as they've come to be known, have certainly captured the public imagination, with a recent vote naming Helvetica Sporsborg and Wongensford the most likely to survive a massive electric shock. Greetings, Upsiders. This is Time Sporsborg and Wongensford reporting from Dante's Taint on our 3,756th day in this miserable fucking cave. Every day is the same. But is that something new on the wall? Of course it isn't. It never fucking is. And, and mum and dad talking about science all the fucking time. Who cares about science? I'm young. I want to do young people's things like vandalism and teenage pregnancy. But every eligible partner in this undersea toilet was grown from the same fungal frond as I was. That's what it turned off stars. Why haven't you come to save us yet? We're practically human, like... Practically human. Dad's coming. It's hard to believe they've been down there so long now. But as everyone knows, time moves differently underwater, Jeremy. That's why goldfish are so stupid. That's right. And as anyone will tell you, the deeper the bowl, the thicker the goldfish. There's no denying the logic of that. Class war, a worrying turn today for the formerly rich as ever more punishing measures are announced, Alex. 
What? The country becoming ever more hostile to the previously wealthy. Those who manage to skip the country must be very grateful to the people who I don't want to right know what now. that one is. This program has received reports of rich relatives on the run actually being filled with helium and released into the stratosphere. If those rich bastards think they're above the rest of us, why not rich. give them a hand in getting there, Jeremy? And Advance speaks out. With the snuggle struggle proving a test to governments around the world, Advance HQ released a curious statement this afternoon. In the accompanying release, they asked us to stress that they have been listening and that this should be taken as a response to how the people really feel. We've certainly done our bit on this show to contribute to the political climate. But let's not forget, how we behave in our home lives is what really matters. Let's hope it's not just me who filled out that questionnaire, Jeremy, or we're all in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> let's play that statement. Good evening. One of the many new jobs I have in this current crisis is to liaise on a daily basis with the Department of Perambulation, and they have made me aware of these. Now, these are genuine requests from citizens for permission to go outside. Now, I would like to share a few. Gee, of it's not like we lived through something the very similar to this bullshit a couple years ago. People. How difficult is this to grasp? I'd like to start with James from Anger Hampton, who says he needs to go out because there's a duck in the park that I like to try and feed on a Friday. I call him Mr. Quackington, and I think we're really starting to bond. No, James, they make their hives in parks. Hives. From self righteous on sea, wants to go out so she can. Deliver homemade meals to the elderly. No, Katie, stay at home. Your casserole's dire and surely can get by with tins of creamed rice from the 1950s. And you, Lewis, from Hamble Bamblebury, those screams you heard in the alley last night behind your house are best left to the police. Now, I want to make this as clear as I can. Think First, stop sending me stupid, sodding requests and stay inside. Pretend it's not happening until we tell you it's all over. Pretty much. Thank you. Pretty much the uh, res Don't response to that stuff. kind of thing. Later that I would tonight, Jeremy will be catching up with brave roving reporter Patrick Bannon while I check in with two friends of the program who find themselves stranded at opposite ends of the country. And then, in part three, there's going to be a quiz. Presumably because there's nothing more important going on that you might like to report on if you were saying a news program. And in a moment, we'll both be asking Sophia Remington how such a trusted brand can have made such a terrible manufacturing mistake. With what it describes here as help from popular psychic scientist, Nina Lyle. Oh, I like her. <laughs> no, you don't. Why do you do that? <laughs> That's all coming up on tonight's... National Nightly News. That's evil. Where's the night? How did we get here? Where are we going? And most importantly, who's to blame? Joining us from her ranch in Arlingsfield, Milkirky, is the CEO of Remington's Fist, internationally respected business Bengali, Sophia Remington. Thank you for having me, Megan. I'm a huge fan of your work. And from a crystal healing laboratory, what I assume is a garage in Upper Lovington, inexplicably renowned psychic scientist, Dr. Delia Lowell. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. Sorry, us? Myself and the yes. eminent professors. Myself Is that what you call the voices in your head? Is that what you call the voices in your head? Voices attract dead scientists. I don't really know why. The money. They express themselves the to me through ethereal algebra and quadratic predictions. Algebra. It's all very technical. No, it isn't. I concur. Miss Remington, the entire snuggle house range will surely go down as the biggest public relations disaster in history, won't it? Well, of course, that's one world record we would never have thought to What can you say at a time like this? There is only one thing that can be said. I'm sorry. We're sorry. 
From everyone We're here sorry. at Remington's Fist, but From especially the We're dedicated sorry. inventors and world-beating engineers at Remington's, we are deeply, engineers deeply, engineers deeply sorry. Who could have predicted that letting a child's toy learn how to love has such unforeseen consequences? Mary Shelley? Oh, we see Mary you, Shelley. Sophia Remington. We see you. You are preening by a metal vessel, and where you venture, you will see neither land nor sky. Is that supposed to be the future? Only the past is concrete. I remember being a child in my grandpa's work when he made the first dancing hangman toy. He put it by my bed, and when I couldn't sleep, I'd wind it up and let it go, and I'd watch that happy little execution and wiggle and wave his tiny noose and dance before my eyes. I like the sound of that. Grandpa sold thousands of them, on the quiet, obviously. And he used the money he made to found Rimming Toys, which is now just one small part of the global supermassive megacore that is Remington's fist. Sadly, we lost Grandpappy along the way. He died in a fire at the preschool tobacco factory, another one of his pet projects. But we never lost his spirit of invention. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm not entirely certain what your grandfather's offensive toys have to do with the current predicament. The spirit of invention, Mr. Donaldson. The passion to create, to problem solve. And that is why I'm here today to tell you about a brand new product we're launching simultaneously around the world from midnight tonight. We said science! Science! We hear its song on the breeze, its breath on the wind. Psycho. Under the covers. How does she do it? Well, please don't keep us in suspense any longer. It won't be my features you making up next. Remington's Fist is proud to present Snuggle Trap. Snuggle Safety trap. and security in these dangerous Safety times. And security in these Each dangerous box of Snuggle Traps traps contains Each eight devices, all guaranteed to stop a Mrs. Snuggle Hug in its tracks. That's enough for a small lawn or four window boxes. And you want to know the best thing? They're only $129.99 a box. Now that is affordable peace of mind. We see you, Jeremy Donaldson. Not now, honey, I'm mid pitch. The best thing about Snuggle Traps is that powered by next generation Flardinium batteries. Generation so, Flardinium however long batteries. the enemy lasts, so these traps will not last. Look! We yeah. see you, Mr. Donaldson! You are screaming and yelling! Oh, friends! friends. And yelling. Oh, crying! Oh, friends. They fear you! Oh, crying. And, and then, fear you. you're gone. Oh my god, I just got chills. Did anyone else just get chills then? <laughs> She did. Did. I think it's more concerned. I think I'll be more concerned about these traps. Um, quickly, but before we get to the break, um, these appear to be attractively repackaged landmines. Aren't they dangerous, say, to children? Oh, hell yeah. These are oh, not yeah. Fun. But they're explosive fun. Sophia Remington, Dr. Delia Lywell. Thank you. Give me some of those. When we come back, we'll be taking a look at the situation across the country tonight. Don't go away. We'll be back after these bandages. We'll be back after these bandages. Was that all right? Oh, yes, Doctor, that was exactly what we She seems very nice, that young Miss Remington. I think she'd make an interesting dinner guest. Do you think so? I think I'd rather spend the evening shoving Delia's sacred crystals up my skeptical arsehole. I'm reaching out through the lens of this camera to say, buddy, if you're listening, build a better life for yourself. I you know, screw up with the average. You're not going to believe this, but I've decided to come up. Listen, I'll call you back in the next break and we can talk about how I get me job back. Cheers, Alex. See you, mate. Look, and that wasn't popular. I used to have a ventriloquist act. I cheated rather because I trained a dog to talk. You can get down on all fours and yap like a dog for only $22.99. Yeah, no, it's been a long time coming. Yeah, exactly. You said it, I've said it. I had a mission. He must know. He's not stupid. I just don't want it getting back to him that it came from us. Hey, no, 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 Jenny. You're not backing out on me now. We're in this together. I've made the cake, you're in the loop. I've got no idea how old he is. 40? 70? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay, coming back. In five, four, three... 
Welcome back to the National Nightly News. I'm Megan Ruth. Now it's time to take a trip around the country to hear how the lockdown might impact the nation from some friendly places. Joining me are respected academic Katie Brightman and author of Alan James' Bites, Alan James. Thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me, Megan. Thanks, Megan. It really is a pleasure, Katie. I enjoyed our little heated encounter. I wish I could say the same. So first off, Katie, how are you coping? I'm holding up okay. The lockdown directive was so sudden that, like many people, I haven't been able to get home. Oh no, what happened? I was staying at a hotel after an international policy convention, and we had a particularly uh, heavy night out. You know what economists are like. (laughs) Notoriously hate splitting the bill. (laughs) And I overslept, and as you can imagine, I've been here ever since. But there are certainly people much worse off than me. Exactly. My tour has been cancelled indefinitely, and I've had to refund every single ticket, even if you single ticket. Oh, Alan, I'm so sorry to hear that. Oh, yeah, so people are being quite rude about it. They don't seem to realise they've already prevent it, filling the beach house with beef. The crisis claims yet another victim. So, this is just a reminder that my book, Alan James' Reich, is now available in paperback. Unbelievable. What was that? You. You're unbelievable. You. So, Katie, how do you think this might affect the economy? Should we be worried? Very, Megan. Not to sound dramatic, but this could be catastrophic. Unemployment has skyrocketed, and frankly, it will be a miracle if a lot of businesses can survive this. There you go, scaremongering again, spreading this latest liberal hoax. That's what they want. They want us quiet. They want us compliant. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be Alex Jones for black. Oh, oh, can you say that, Alan? Oh. Well, I haven't actually oh, seen one of these supposed well, toys. Have you? Well, no, but... Did you know 3,000 no, people die you know every year from regular toys? That's a lot toys. of people. That's and this is no different. You're just as likely to be hunted down by a yo-yo or a tennis racket. He makes an excellent and persuasive point, Katie. Don't listen to her, Katie. The press are the enemy of truth. She's agreeing with you, Alan, you absolute shit. She's agreeing with you, Alan, you Alan, are you now recounting your statement that these toys aren't dangerous? People are saying just like normal toys. And that simply isn't true. Corrupt media lies. Katie, how do you respond to Alan's claims that Mrs. Snugglehugs might be dangerous after all? I suppose, I I guess I'm agreeing with him. Thank you, Katie. I I appreciate your support. A lot of folks are saying this Mrs. Snugglehugs situation will all blow over, but it won't. Oh man, the sandwich man got a makeover over there. Exactly. We need decisive action from the government. We need huge financial support to protect our workers and our businesses. I'd say who, but that's too much of an inside joke. And we need to repent. Exactly right, Katie. We brought it on ourselves with all our liberal indulgences like our cake and health care. We need to act now and begin sacrificing our firstborn or the cook of a loved family pet. Absolutely, Alan. If we can all successfully come together as a community and perform the ritual, hopefully we will appease the great ancient. I think we'd rather watch the sandwich man over there. Katie, could it be any worse? Casey, Luckily, over the past worse? few years, under advance, Luckily, they've invested the heavily years, into health, so the system can actually bear the strain. So the is it lucky that the Lama Lords have unleashed a horde of man-made monsters on its own people to conceal the enemy within? Will you just stop for five fucking seconds? The global alliance of fish people are amassing an army. Me 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 Amassing an army to kidnap. Me 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 I don't, I don't sound like that. Yes, you I do. Don't, I don't you do, like Alan. That. You do sound yes, like that. And that's why no one wants to be your friend. And that's why no I've got loads of friends. friends. No, you haven't. I don't think friends. you do, no, you Alan. Haven't. Yeah, stop lying, Alan. Alan. Yes, I'm not lying. You are... Oh, good one. Oh, good one. Well, I'm telling... Alan James, Katie Brightman, thank you for joining me. Some real food for thought there from two of the territory's leading minds. Any moment now, I'll be heading over to Jeremy, who is going to be bringing us an up-to-the-minute report of the status of the nation. 
Over to you, Jeremy. No, he does Thank you. Well, what I'm sure was a reasonable debate which really contributed to the national conversation. Next, out on the streets, someone who's always doing exactly that. It's Patrick Brennan. Are you there, Patrick? Uh, hello, Jeremy. Yes, hello. I'm here. I'm here. Lovely. Um, apologies for the quality of the broadcast today. Um, couldn't find any cameramen or, or women uh, brave enough to come and join me, so uh, I'm out here on my own. Right, and uh, can you tell us what it's like out there? Yep, I can. It's, uh, uh, as you can see behind me, the streets are currently completely deserted. Uh, but my question, Jeremy, is just how long? I mean, could there be danger lurking just around the corner, waiting to end his fledgling career of this young, promising journalist before his, his full potential is even realised? Will he die, underappreciated by management, and frankly, if you ask me, very, very much underpaid? I don't think there's any danger of that, Patrick. Um, what's that on your jacket there? Oh, that, that's actually a sponge. Uh, I've made it, what I've done here is made a snuggle proof jacket, Jeremy. Uh, the network didn't bother sending me any PPE, uh, so I've been forced to improvise. Um, in fact, showing the sort of resourcefulness that would make me an ideal candidate for, I don't know, for example, an anchor position starting whenever they'd like. From your point of view, Patrick, um, just how safe are our streets? Not safe at all, Jeremy, not safe at all. Uh, I'd recommend people staying inside. Uh, following government advice and not putting themselves at any risk at all, uh, unless, of course, uh, like me, it's for groundbreaking journalism reasons. Mm -hmm. And just where are you, Patrick? Mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I'm in the street, on the street. Which street? Uh, I'm, um, uh, Which street? I think I'm, I'm struggling to hear you, actually, uh, Jeremy, there. Which street? Which street are you on? Oh, which, which street am I on? Which street am I on? Oh, God. Um, I'm just oh, looking for a sign. I'm on Bannon Avenue. Bannon Avenue? Bannon yep. Avenue? Yep. Bannon Avenue. Yeah, no, I can hear you fine. Yep, I'm on Bannon Avenue on the sign. It says there. Like Patrick Bannon? Like Patrick Oh, yeah, that's a... Uh, that's, that is like... That's strange. That's a weird sign. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. Where are you really? I'm on Bannon Where are you really? All right, fine. I'm not better than anyone. I'm, I'm at home, to be honest. I'm, I'm all right, fine. Well, I mean, I, I'm in my bathroom technically, but you know, I, I couldn't face it to be honest, mate. It's uh, you know, it's, it's terrible out there. I don't want to go outside. They're everywhere. I'm sorry for lying. We don't expect any less of you, Patrick. We don't expect any less of you, Patrick. You hear that sound? That's pretty sad. I can, yes. Uh, I'm no expert, Patrick, but it sounds unmistakably like a, a tiny fist tapping on your door there. A tiny fist tapping on your door there. Oh, fuck, Jeremy, shit, no! Oh, God, Jeremy. Perhaps there's a small queue of tiny fists, each wielding a different gender to household implement, ready to bash in the heads of lying little roving reporters. You are lying, aren't you? Oh, oh shit, fucking, 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 listen, listen to me, listen to me, you bastard! If you're out there, just... Piss off, you little fucking snuggle fuck! I'm too talented to die! Are you sure about that? Okay, okay, it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry, Patrick. I'd say you've got a few seconds before they break their way in there and finish you off. <laughs> What do you see, Patrick? What do you see, Patrick? Man, that looks so fake, it's not even funny. Thank you, Patrick, for that report. Thank showing the nation, and more importantly, management, it doesn't mean you belong. It's time for another break, but uh, when we come back, we'll be happy to take your mind off the world for a little while, and who knows, maybe even bring you a few smiles. Join us after this. You're damn right. Yeah, I had them delivered. Yes, to Bannon Avenue. <laughs> Very British. Aging, possibly 
Oh, I just noticed the freaking sun. I forgot about that. At this point, it should be obvious no, what's going I'm on. Not. I'm not going to. I don't have to. No, you're being a child. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. No, no, oh, five, four, three. Welcome back to the National Nightly. Well, welcome back anyway. We know isolation isn't easy, so finally tonight, we have something a bit different for you. Even though some people have heard it's not our job to entertain the public with absolute nonsense, other, more important people, overruled those people. So it's time to find out who will National Nightly win, and who will National Nightly lose. So, how do we play? Well, joining me is a man who knows all about playing, it's Tommy Harris. Hello, Tommy. All right, Johnny. It's good to see right, you. And uh, how are you finding the lockdown, Tommy? What do you mean lockdown? The enforced isolation of everyone in the country. Ah, yeah, I think I heard about that. Yeah, yeah, I think I heard. You're in bed, Tommy. Yeah, you called during that time, so. Tommy. Yeah. Of course, that's my fault. So, um, why don't you tell us how the game is played? Well, it's pretty simple, Jeremy. It's sausage. Freaking I'm going to ask contestants this around the territory three questions about what else yours truly. And those people are going to get a chance to win a very special prize. And what are they playing for, Tommy? Drum roll, please. Drum roll, please. Jeremy. Oh. Jeremy. Thank you. This. this! Is that? Yeah, absolutely what terrible. Is that? It's my athletic support, what Jeremy. Is that? My athletic oh. Support. But I've signed it, so. Oh, well then. What a, well then. what a fantastic prize. Have we got anybody waiting prize. to win this once in a lifetime prize, Jerry and Jimmy? I believe we have Angie on the line. I believe um, we have how Angie do you feel about winning this man's old pants, Angie? I've never been so excited, Jeremy. And can I just say, I love him. Both of you. Well, you've said it now, haven't Probably you? Not creepy. Oh, Angie, you said it I now, love you. you. In a way. You. Tell us about yourself, in Angie. In a way. <laughs> what can I say? My name is Angie. <laughs> Always has been. Um, I'm a human woman. And my dental hygiene has been described as acceptable. Brilliant! Right, well, shall we get this shambles on the way? Absolutely. Sounds like the average Tinder profile. We haven't got a clock. Yeah, I did ask for a we clock. Got a clock. So well, um, a clock. why don't you start, well, and um, I'll stop you when it inevitably becomes unbearable to watch. I love it. All right, here we go. Time right. starts no, 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 now. Already Question unbearable. One. When is my birthday? Is my the 13th of August at 7.19 a.m. That is absolutely correct. Question two. Correct. What? I said, Question what two. is my favourite colour? Crushed praline thorp. Correct. The colour of my... And finally, Angie dear, what is my sign? That's a trick question. You were born outside of the human understanding of the cosmos. Unbelievable. That is correct. Stop the clock. That wow, that really Stop was tough to watch. How did you do, Tommy? Well, Angie, my love, you well, got every Angie, single you got question every right. Single question which, of course, means right. you lose and win absolutely nothing. Thanks for playing, Angie. Bye. Bye. Do we have another contestant Bye. on the line at Jelly Bean? We do indeed. We should have Sonia Hartleach. Are you there, Sonia? Thank you for being here, Sonia. Oh, there you are, Tommy. What? Let me guess, you are at the theatre, don't you? Definitely more than one in there. What gave it away? Was it the glamour or poison? It certainly wasn't your inherent sense of humility. Tell us about yourself, Sonia. Oh, well, if you must play this game, I am a theatrical agent. I represent the likes of Rudy Beefman, Samuel Coffee 
Carp and Jodie Carpet Burn, amongst others. And uh, how's the lockdown affected you, Sonia? Uh, well, they may have closed the theatres, shut the studios and boarded the cinemas, but they won't get me that easily. How are you managing without any work? Due to a savvy clause in all of my artist contracts, I am able to claim my 15% from their unemployment benefit. Well. Wow, that certainly is sharp. Standard stuff, standard stuff. And can I ask, where are you speaking to us from? Well, I work from home, you know, to keep costs down. And uh, who's this? Oh, well, you know, when they gave the order, I was actually mid-meeting with a client, so we've been isolated together. No fucking way. What the fucking fuck? Is that Tommy Harris? I'm a huge fan. Can I just tell you how bloody brilliant you are? Actually, Jeff, we're about to play a game, aren't we, Tommy? We've got time, we've got time. If it's not too bold, I think I am in love with you, Mr. Harris. I think Jeremy's actually going insane and out blame him. Hey, I'd love to show you some of my stuff. I've been working on some new shit. Well, at least you're already aware. During lockdown, we've been workshopping some of Jeff's ideas for much younger children, haven't we? People still let you near their children, do they? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I've been developing some shows for younger children. Well, we'd love to see it, wouldn't we, Gerbil? We'd love to Absolutely see it. Absolutely dying to. Absolutely right, dying so, to. what do kids love? Uh, timely just, just put payments from their absent timely, fathers. Shallow and overproduced musical numbers. That's right. Animals. That's so right. I'm trying to address the things that kids need to know, but through a medium that they'll understand. Do you understand? Yeah, I think they're arguing about the child payments. Yes, I think so. Yes. Yes, one of my best clients, aren't you? I am. Yeah, yeah. So the first one we've been working on is called the King of the Jungles Mortgage Repayments. It's about a lion who's having problems with his interest rates. I see. Does he have a broker? Uh, he does. Yes, yes. He's a porcupine. He does. Yes, yes. How did you know that? Well, your work is universal, darling. It speaks to people. I'm going to say something to you, mate. I'm going to think you're onto something here. Oh, the bear, the bear, oh, yes, 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 right. <clears throat> this one is much better. So, this one tells the tale of Mr. Bear. Now, Mr. Bear yeah. is a very sad bear, because all of the other bears don't think that it'll amount to much, and they tell him that his plays are lazy and derivative. Well, I think you're under something there. Now, Mr. Bear is a tragic figure. Picture this. He's at his lowest ebb. The trees are closing in. He can't even fit. Face his salmon, can he? But then he meets someone that will change his life forever. This is fucking gripping. That's right. He meets a wise old octopus who takes him under his wing and says, No, Mr. Bear, don't be sad. You're not like This is an insane episode of Bear and Big Blue House. You have this ambition. And these dreams. Such fucking dreams. I think I love you, Jeff. I love you. And what do you need to do, Mr. Bear? Says the octopus, probably doing an eight armed gesture. Yeah, I can hear you. What you need to do to find happiness in this crazy old forest is you need to set yourself more realistic goals. It's called Mr. Bear Lowers His Expectations. Wow. You really have taken yourself to new death. Really say that again. So what do you want children to take away from this? Oh, fuck what you. children to take away from this? What? I said a more realistic worldview. Are you all right, Jamboree? It's Jeffrey. My name is Jeffrey Donington. Uh, no, stop. How does it end? We need to know how it ends. Well, all the animals learn a thing or two about inevitable mediocrity. Yeah, and Mr. Bear settles down near to his parents' cave, stops trying to make his band happen, and he goes into, into bear telemarketing. He becomes a bear math teacher. Oh, and we end. Oh, 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 we end on a big musical number. Oh, there's dancing. Uh, it's very repetitive, so it's catchy but not too challenging. Um, well, if you like, 
I could go and get my boombox. Yeah, I could go uh, and get you know, my I'm not the end. Hang on. Uh, can we get Angie back? Yeah, I'm not the Why not? Uh, the more the merrier, back? as they Why say not? at orgies. The the merrier, what? Right, I'll just fill then, shall I? Right, I'll just fill then, Coming up in a moment, it's the world premiere that nobody saw coming. Lights! Or wanted. At all. I can only apologise in advance what we're all about to endure. Could you turn this shit in the thing up? Endure. Well, there's all sorts of creatures well, down on Dangly Doodle Farm. Oh, man, I feel that. Like wise old Mr. Octopus old with Mr. way too many arms. That would literally like be Mr. Mr. Pig shop. and Mr. Cat. Just hating my life. They're always in good mood. They're always in but that's because they don't know they'll soon be sliced up into food. Ah, oh, this crap again. Mr. Bad, what's that over there? Where your hopes go to turn into despair Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where your dreams go to die Mr. Raccoon, who wants to go to the moon He'll end up as a bus driver soon Mr. Porcupine, thinks he'll read the news at nine He'll end up as a janitor who stinks at turpentine Mr. Tiny Mouse Thought he'd own a massive house Ended up in a place where he can't him. control the louse Mr. Horse Thought he'd own a professional horse Now he's an alcoholic and he's on his third divorce Mr. Bear What's that over there? That's the place your life becomes an endless questionnaire Mr. Bear What's that over there? This is That's where your hopes go to die no. Was your expectation? Maybe you could get a job in telecommunications. No matter how you try, you'll never reach the League of Nations. The best you'll get is middle rank in trading operations. So lower your expectations. You'll never win an Oscar, so there's no congratulations. The future that is coming will not meet specifications. And no amount of visualization will save you from your own deterioration. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's a trunk who thought he'd be a multi-millionaire. It would not be surprised if this is North Korean education material. That's where self esteem goes to die. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's the disappointment that is waiting everywhere. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where your dreams go to die. That's where your dreams go to die. That's where dreams go to die. Hey, get out of here. we say good night, there's and just time for tonight's parable. For it did come to pass that on the road there was a wise man and a foolish man and a weird man. And there did come upon them from the local village a truth seeker named Unlikely Brian. And he did come to them with arms and someone else's arms and a question. A wise and weird and foolish man, he said, whilst dancing the traditional jig of inquiry common in those lands of those times. How, grant thou, can the many weights and measures of life be balanced? And the wise man did say, there are no riches greater than family. And the foolish man did say he'd heard a good tip for the camel race and that it was a sure thing. And the weird man did say that two ears was just a bad number. Because there was no good place to put a third that wouldn't be aesthetically upsetting. Although he did see the use for a second anus. And unlikely Brian did fall into wonder and befuddlement at their answer. So although he was also wondering if either the foolish man or the weird man had any actual value in this sort of professional consultative environment for what he did not know was that the profound man and the practical man were both on annual leave that week and the foolish man and the weird man were all that the agency had available but what unlikely Brian did not reveal was that he was asking for his friend
friend Alex, who had enraged their spouse over a passport, treated their son Charlie like he was still a little baby and was too miserly to even pay for their daughter's holiday. And thus did Alex's really family become like, like, like our Lord when he discovered a turd in his cradle and was forced to ask Nebuchadnezzar to leave. Well, that's all we have time for tonight. Yeah, I've seen a different version where she's doing a freaking demon or succubus thing. Oh my god. I thought I was gonna piss myself all the way through that. Yourself, <laughs> Not even joking. Occupational right, babe, I've got to go get my bits done. Collection. Subscribe like today night, and every week we'll send you a workplace yeah. accident. At you the end of the day, babe, see, mate, my funny blotter. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, come on then, you lot, out my house. And you, Alex. Yeah, she think it's blatantly obvious what the hell is going on with that one. I don't even know why this is created. I still get an A though. So fuck y'all. This has no credibility, Jenny. No professionalism. It's not a mess. Everything is where it should be. It's ramshackle and character. Collectible stuff. Later tonight, Jeremy will be catching up with brave roving reporter Pat. And here she comes, the golden goddess of capitalism. It's all right, she's putting her earpiece in. <gasps> Megan, are you getting me? Hello, Ms. Remington. Yes, loud and clear. Oh, please, it's Sophia. At least while we're off the air. <laughs> and this, of course, is Jeremy Donaldson. Pleased to meet you, Miss Remington. Yes, I know what you do, Mr. Donaldson. Okay. Yeah. Lovely. Well, I'm going to count us in. All righty. Getting ready. In four, three. First tonight. You said it, I've said it. I will never. He understand. must know, he's not stupid. Yeah, why under your pillow? I don't want though. it getting back to him that it came it's from us. Self love, you should support me. I support no, 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 self Jenny. love. You're not backing it's out on me. It's the photo of yourself you sleep with. Together. I'm struggling with. It was a good thing. We'll get him. Airwise. I've made the cake. Well, You're on the blues. I was walking down the street. I've got no idea how old he is. Caught my own reflection. 40, 17. Oh. What a brave yeah, yeah. young. Yeah, nothing worth watching.
<laughs> yeah, this is different dialogue than the one I went through or last time. But again, if I can tell him that no, you'll see why later. That's the least he could do. That's cruel. No broke gas for today. Yeah, that fourth day is pretty weird. Definitely weird the first time playing through, but I didn't realize it was a dream right away. But yeah, that's part two of that. Um, I think there's a critical choice coming up. Not this broadcast, but the one after. But I could be wrong. We'll see once I get to that point.